consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindsets and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your sogasmic business. Enjoy this light language activation as we begin to magnetize and monetize. Welcome, my loves. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I am so excited about today's episode. We are talking about how to own your creativity. So if you are a creative Um, you're going to really love this episode. We're going to talk about the benefits of being creative and how you can actually take your beautiful brilliance and profit in today's world. Of course, we're going to dive in so much deeper. If you really enjoy and see lots of value from this episode, I'd love for you to share it on social media. It is Rosalind Fung Coaching Bold Sexy Warrior for Facebook and on Instagram it's Bold Sexy Warrior. Before we dive in, I'd love to let you know I am so excited. I've been shifting, recalibrating things within myself and outside of myself and and particularly how it's been so expansive for me. And I've been really moving into the next level version of me, which is what I practice and preach. (laughs) I practice what I preach. And of course, that's going to show up in my next level vision version of Bold Sexy Warrior. So I am very excited to announce this is uh, the next level, my one year group coaching program called Soul Ascension Business Catalyst Container, where you are immersing in this magical container with all the Akasha soul energy work, mindset work, belief reprogramming, especially around selling and money, and the sexy social media strategies. I'm dropping in all the prosperity codes and DGAF codes (laughs) in here too. Let's show up unapologetically and authentically. And I am calling in those of you who are newer in your business within you're just starting your business or perhaps you're in within the next within two or three years of business but you haven't quite monetized yet let's get you really magnetizing your soul tribe your soulmate clients and monetizing on your calling if you'd like to see if this is aligned for you because this is I really care about getting results having my clients get results okay this is an application process only we want to make sure this is a really good fit for you so you can go to www.electrifymybusiness.com to apply we start January 2022 I can't wait to have you all right my loves so let's shift into our show here today I have my special guest who I met uh, in a mastermind together as peers and uh, her name is Elizabeth Johnston she is a creativity and story coach as well as a professor who has helped thousands of people realize their creativity. Elizabeth was awarded a Canada Council of the Arts Writing and Research Grants for her book, No Small Potatoes. Her short video, Keepsake, was shortlisted in two film festival competitions. And when Elizabeth isn't creating experiential retreats, online summits, or podcast episodes for her show, Own Your Creativity, you can find her playing the Bodron, writing poetry, or buried in an issue of Harper's Magazine. I am so excited to have our special guest today. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Rosalind. It's awesome to be here with you today. 
Oh, I feel like we're going to get so, including myself, so many amazing golden nuggets. I mean, just <laughs> with how much beautiful um, accomplishments you have created in this world. That's so exciting. And that would be my first question is how did you get to become who you are today and do what you do? Well, you know, that's that's an interesting story, and it, it's kind of a multifaceted story. But um, I think what I'll share with you just right now is I was in university. I came late to university at the age of 24 because mm. uh, I was working uh, actually in the military. I was um, wor- working full time, but I was in the militia. I wasn't in the regular force. Um, and uh, And at some point, I thought to myself, well, I should probably become part of the regular force. That's what we call it here in Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, because that would be the sensible thing to do career-wise instead of just keep working, you know, in the militia, which paid less and didn't have all the benefits and everything. And so then I was thinking, well, should I uh, go in as an other rank or should I go in as an officer? Because at the point I was as another rank. And uh, But I really got on well with the officers. And I thought to myself, what was the difference between the officers and the other ranks? And I realized that the only difference is that the officers had gone to university. And so that's what I needed to do. I decided to go to university instead of joining the military full time. <laughs> and so there I'm, I met this professor who, um, it was in my second humanities course. And the first year I took a humanities course, I absolutely loved it and aced it. And so the second course, I thought the same thing is going to happen. But my first paper that I got back from the second professor had a note on it to go and see him. And it had not an A on it. I don't even remember now what it was. It was a C or something. Um, But I was devastated because, you know, I did so well and this was what I wanted to major in. And I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, like, is it not embarrassing enough that I got a low mark? Now I have to go see the, the, the professor in his office. But anyway, I went and the professor said to me, basically, this is a lousy essay, <laughs> but it's a really good story. Have you ever thought of going into creative writing? And I had never thought about going into creative writing. I didn't even know that program existed. But he told me what it was about, and he helped me put my portfolio together, and then I got in. And so that really was the turning point uh, in my life and set me on the road to doing what I do today. Oh, wow. Isn't that so amazing when (laughs) our (laughs) mentors, our professors really, like, see that potential? And it's like, oh, you thought you were going and get in trouble, quote, unquote. (laughs) (laughs) How beautiful that this professor saw your gifts. And that's yeah. what lit that fire within you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I'd love yeah. for you to expand a little bit more about your journey then, what happened after as then you started to explore the creativity. How was it that you put all of this together that you became a story coach and the creativity mm-hmm. part? Yeah. So... So I got into the program and we just, you know, all of us, we just really immersed ourselves in, in story. And I realized that I had always been interested in story, even back to when I was a little girl and, you know, my parents would have uh, parties and, and uh, you know, people over for dinner and anybody who would listen, I would be telling them the story Uh, that I most recently seen, let's say on Walt Disney or something. And, um, and, and when I look back on it, I realized that I was telling them about foreshadowing and how all the pieces work together to preview what was to come. And I didn't have that vocabulary at that point, but now I realize that that's, I was dissecting the story and how it worked. And I was, I'm sure, boring everybody to tears <laughs> with my analysis. But, um, but through university and then doing my master's, I realized that um, story just was part of my DNA. And then I realized that actually story is part of everybody's DNA and and in terms of our creativity, we're all creative. We sometimes just don't even 
know that because when we grow up, you know, we're getting a job and getting serious like me. I'm thinking, okay, I got to get serious about my life. Got to join the military full time and, you know, be um, be sensible. Um, And in that process, we lose parts of ourselves. And often the first part to go is our creativity because there's no ROI in creativity. We just, you know, have to get down to the business of, you know, paying our mortgage and and all that stuff. And um, so I, I just was exhilarated, you know, through my studies. And then I I started teaching um, and uh, because I was really good at, at helping people understand the mechanics of story and, um, and, and complex ideas too. So anyway, I just loved teaching. And um, then I, I was teaching for about, I guess it was about 20 years at this point. And I'd go to parties and people would say, oh, you're so lucky. You're teaching all these creative things. Because I, I was teaching poetry, screenwriting, novella, wow. uh, you know, just a- everything to do with that creative writing. I was teaching it. What is and, a novella? Uh, a novella is a, a short novel. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. I have not mm-hmm. heard of that term. Actually, if mm-hmm. I can ask you a pause, how would you define creativity? So for those that are those people who are listening, um, you know, we all have different definitions of creativity. How do you define it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So for me, creativity is where our essence lies. It's what mm. is where our purpose is and that's why it's so terrible for us to lose our creativity or kind of reject it or put it you know in our in a box in our in our our childhood Um, because for us to self-actualize for us to realize our potential we have to make room in our life for our creativity we have to own our creativity and and it's really what's going to fuel our happiness and help us get into that state of flow. I don't know, you know, Mahali Csikszentmihalyi and, you know, and so, and, and, it, and creativity doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a full-time writer or you write novels or poetry, uh, although that can, you know, be part of it, but even the way you show up in your corporate job can have creativity in it. Um, and if we, if we don't have that in, you know, part of our routine, just like meditation or exercise or walking, if we don't incorporate that and embrace it, then we're kind of running on empty. It's because creativity helps to refuel our batteries. And so if we don't have that, we're going to get burnt out. And in terms of business, if we, if we don't have um, an approach to welcome creativity into our our business it's like we're running our business with one arm tied behind our back Mm -hmm. and for me i after i had been teaching for about 20 years and and like i said you know people were so envious that i was teaching all this creative stuff and that must be so invigorating and whatnot and i realized that actually I wasn't feeling invigorated. I wasn't feeling all, wow, this is so lovely. And I thought to myself, why is that? And I realized that I was burnt out because I was giving my all to the students and I didn't leave room in my life for me to own my creativity. I was getting all wrapped up with the administration of, you know, when you're a faculty member and there's this to do and that to do and, and all these things that kind of grind you down. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I had forgotten to make room in my life for my own creativity. And so then I decided, okay, I, I have to, you know, make room. I have to make an effort to bring that back into my life. And, um, and that's when I did the video um, that you mentioned in my bio. And mm. and it was a collaborative thing. I got a grant uh, to do it. And, and uh, it was actually based on a poem that I wrote about my grandmother many years ago. And I had come across this thing called video poems, which is these very short videos based on a poem. Either the poet themselves will do it, the video or somebody else um, you know, will read the poem and create this video around the the images in in the uh, poem 
And they're very short, but it's this sort of underground thing called, and, and actually there's a website, movingpoems.com, that you can check them out. Some of them are just absolutely fantastic. I was just going to ask, where can we check this out? Yeah. So moving, what is it? Sorry. Moving poems. Moving poems. Dot com. Yeah. Okay, we'll add that to the show notes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, I thought this would be a great, you know, little project to do, you know, while I'm teaching full time and so busy, you know, with my with my job. Um, but what was so interesting was that because at, at one point I thought, how am I going to do this creative project on top of everything else that I have on my plate? But as soon as I started getting into that flow of the project and working with the other artists, everything else in my life got better across the board. And so things that bugged me at work, just I didn't even focus on it anymore because it really, in a grand scheme of things, it's not important. And so once I made room in my life for my creativity, everything changed. And so that's when I started my business on your creativity because I, understood firsthand that you can be creative, but you could lose your creativity. And most of us do. And most of us never get it back. And I realized firsthand that we need it. We need it to be our best selves. Yes. And I could actually jam a little bit more about this and how it's related to the sacral chakra which Mm -hmm. is where our womb space is so we're going to pause here and move into commercial when we come back we're going to uh, jam a little bit on that and continue on having elizabeth really share the benefits of being more benefits of being creative (laughs) a conscious lifestyle for a mindful life Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. My loves, you know you're here as a soul-led leader to transform this world through the sharing of your passions and gifts. You are here to be in your warrior of light and align your business with your highest self. I'm Rosalind Fong of the show Activate Your Sogasmic Business. Let's elevate your business to the next level expansive level. I invite you to flow into a business soul alignment discovery call with me at rosalindfung.com. That's R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. Fun as in have some fun, F-U-N-G. And let's see how I can best hold space for you to align your highest self, magnetize your dream clients and monetize on your soul mission. I can't wait to connect. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. 
Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. All right, welcome back, love. So just before commercial, we were talking about the power of creativity. And for those of you who are familiar with the chakra energy centers in our body, the sacral um, chakra, which is our in our womb space, this is where creativity is birthed. And this is where we hold our self-worth, our sensual, our sexual energy, our power here. And that the highest level, the highest calibration of our sexual power is actually creative power. And so this is all about really tapping into this. And I love what you shared, Elizabeth, which is, you know, we get burnt out if we're not nourishing ourselves with our own creativity and being able to express creativity in whatever way that looks like for each of us. You know, I, I wonder, Elizabeth, you probably often get people saying, I'm not creative. I'm not creative. <laughs> Can you speak more into that? Yes, I I actually do have people that say that. And and partly it comes from like I say because we grow up and we kind of mm-hmm. put that aside. Yes. Yeah, but partly it's because of these um labels that we get in childhood and mm-hmm. and so, you know, sometimes, you know, people say like, "Oh, you're so analytical or, oh, you're so good with numbers or, you know, and so they, you know, just like the genders, you know, boy, girl, pink, blue, like, you know, so you're creative or you're analytical or, you know, you're numbers oriented or you're an artist. And so there's these divisions and sometimes we just grow up believing that. Um, Mm. But, but other times it's uh, that we had a really wounding experience in our childhood so, for instance, I, I do these challenges, you know, five-day challenges online, and um, I did a writing challenge once, and, and this woman who is actually a nun, and uh, she was um, in her 70s, and she, she did my challenge online, and she shared that she hadn't written since she was in grade three because she wrote a story, and the English teacher said that it was a terrible story, and she was so damaged by that that she never wrote again. And her her friends, you know, and then later her, her fellow uh, nuns said, you've got to write these stories down. You've got so amazing stories. And and, uh, and she never did until she was in her 70s. And there, there she is taking my Facebook challenge. Wow. It was so emotional. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Good for her for not, Mm -hmm. like, still birthing that into the world at 70 years old. That's incredible. And, yeah, yeah, like we you mentioned earlier, you know, it's conditioning. And it's also conditioning of society's, our societal beliefs around Mm -hmm. you can't make money in this this industry of being creative. And you're living proof that, yeah, you can. (laughs) Definitely, yeah. (laughs) Tell us more about how you support your clients um, in owning their creativity. What's that process look like? Yeah, so I, I, you know, I teach different kinds of, of writing. And recently, though, I've been focusing on the origin story uh, for entrepreneurs. And so that's, uh, you know, Simon Sinek says people don't buy mm-hmm. what you do, they buy yes, why you do it. Exactly. And so, yes, yes, yes. So the origin story is um, why, you, why you're doing what you're doing and, and how you came to, to be doing what you're doing. And so I, I help people with their origin story because oftentimes people want to know. And in fact, um, I came across the statistic recently that, you know, about 60 or two thirds, uh, 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 two thirds that of people polled want to know why people are doing what they're doing, offering the service they're doing, or, you know, they want to know what the story is um, before mm-hmm. they do business with you. Mm-hmm. And absolutely. And, and so um, a lot of times people will, they're, they're attracted to my, my um, programs. Like I have a three-day event 
where I help people unearth uh, their stories and just kind of get comfortable just in general with uh, sharing stories and uh, getting validation from the mm. fellow participants and, and whatnot, because that's a really powerful environment and really validating uh, for them. But um, people will come can and I, say, well, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, can I just say how powerful that, that title of your, your event is, Unearth Your Origin Story? Like, who's it energetically? Yeah. That's so potent. <laughs> and then I want to just really highlight, thank you for being you and doing what you do, because story is what makes the world go round when we speak yep. when we ha when we stand in our power and we so vulnerably so courageously share our truth share our story of origin as you call it and then in community really receive mm -hmm. that sense of being held being heard being seen yeah. that is so healing like it's not just storytelling it's i can hear all the multiple multi-dimensional layers that are there of healing of yes. breaking own patterns and even like generational patterns and how like mm -hmm. potent that is when you step into this next level version of you like that's powerful elizabeth it really really is and and i actually recognized the the power of this um years ago when I literally just woke up one day and I said, I want to teach memoir writing to seniors. I'd never taught seniors before and I hadn't taught memoir yet. And so, I, and, and um, anyway, I shared th th that with um, a fellow writer and um, that this is what I wanted to do and I was going to explore the possibilities. And, um, and then she contacted me later that week saying that, she was approached by a senior se center to teach memoir, but she yeah, couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she couldn't do it. When, was I interested in it? And so I, uh, I did. And, and I, I started teaching. I was teaching there for about three years. And what was fascinating was that, and it's mainly women that, that would take it, but sometimes there were men, but, um, I, I started helping them write about their, their life and just like short pieces. And, um, and our focus wasn't on, you know, the death or, you know, divorce or, you know, I, yes, those things happen, but it really was, okay, that happened. And now how are you better? How did you survive? How did that show your resilience? And so we really are reframing their experience mm -hmm. And then they can move forward into the next phase of their life with a lot more confidence. And in fact, I did have people say, you know, I was really afraid of retirement. I didn't know what I was going to do. So I thought I'd take this writing course. But then they realize that so they deeper. have so much more mm. to contribute. And it, they weren't just their job, which a lot of us in our society, you know, identify with yeah. their job. And then we feel like if that's taken away from us, who are we? And I just, I was amazed at, you know, and I'm here, I'm just like, oh, I'm putting together, a, you know, a little writing class for senior citizens. But I saw the power of transformation for all of those and the fact that it's in community. So those people, they were with me for three years and we were year round, basically. <laughs> I, I took off August and then, you know, the holidays and that was it. And they came back and back and back. And it was it was almost not really to to write a memoir. It was to write their stories and share it, you know, mm -hmm. share it and get that community feedback. And, and like you say, like that being held and validated and 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 um you know, confirm that you're what you ha say is is important and that you matter. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. I'm just there's so many things I want to say about this because I can just feel the magic about it. Um, first of all, seniors, like that would be incredible. All the stories they have to share mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. their life because yeah. they've had such. I mean, they've been on this earth for I'm guessing at least like 60 plus years, but we're working mm -hmm. about seniors, right? And it's just yeah. all the incredible wisdom that can may come through, but also I can hear because, you know, writing a story, writing a book is so healing, like at that next level for ourselves. It really is. Mm -hmm. And so how amazing that not only are you having them share their story, but to 
help, like you said, reframe, which is a coaching technique, right? That Mm -hmm. we, when we, because we live our life from the perspective of our stories. And so I imagine that there's a lot of tears that happen in your classes where it's like, oh my gosh, I don't need to hold on to this perspective of my story anymore I can reframe it I can change it and how that may unfold we get to write the rest of our story and we get to write in a way that where we are writing it from our power so like Elizabeth I'm just like oh this is amazing I'm seriously getting (laughs) jazzed up as you can hear holy moly that's so potent ah to be um part of that part of your your program sounds incredible and just the heartfelt connections that likely get made amongst oh, the yeah. community. Like, wow. Really, it's so deep and, and powerful. And, and you know, as, as I move more into the online entrepreneur world, I realized that, you know, story was getting very popular. Yes. And, and, you know, everybody was saying, oh, you got to use story in your business and whatnot. And I, I was, I was, watching how other coaches were, you know, advising people to do this or, you know, download this template, insert your details, and there you've got your story. And it's like, oh, my goodness, you are not a template. So why should your story be, you know, it's like, Mm. yes, there's form. Yes, there's structure. But there's so much more to than, you know, these kind of dry boxes that people are putting Mm -hmm. themselves into with Mm. these templates. So and, if you can speak more to that, yeah, with the angle of entrepreneurs, because that's who um, this episode is often for, people who are entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. healers, leaders, lightworkers, coaches, practitioners. Yeah. So help us understand how through how you work with entrepreneurs, that really supports them in their business and magnetizing their soulmate clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... For me, it's really important to um, articulate, you know, unearth and and integrate your origin story in your business because that's what it's like a homing beacon for attracting your ideal client. Mm -hmm. Because when you are clear about why you do what you do, then you're able to use that language in everything, you know, in, in your sales conversations, in your marketing. And I'm not saying like use the language like, oh, these are the five top words that, you know, every entrepreneur needs to use when they're using story. No, it's like, it's unique to you. Mm -hmm. And you, you often don't know what your unique language is until you spent time unearthing your origin story. And I say unearth because it's in us, but it's just been buried. And so once we unearth it and put the pieces together under, you know, the guidance of a coach, that understand story structure, all of a sudden people see themselves as their bigger self that, mm-hmm. that they, that they didn't realize or they didn't believe that they could actually be because as an entrepreneur, there are so many moving parts to being an entrepreneur and things that you have to do. And, you know, doing editing, if you're doing a podcast, if you're doing it all yourself, or you have to hire people to do those things. And, you know, still like there's all these moving parts that you can kind of get lost in. And when you make room in your life for your creativity and for your story, all of a sudden it puts everything into context and it helps you flow in your business. So you can attract people that you really love to work with who resonate with your story because yeah, we probably could all, you know, have people, you know, that, um, you know, uh, to, to work with, but are they the right people? Are they the people that we really can affect uh, transformation for um, in, a, in a way that's really easy? Um, and I don't mean like quick, but in a way that flows instead of, mm. you know, working with somebody that isn't really your ideal client. And yes, you can get results, but you're working twice as hard (laughs) Mm -hmm. to get them, you see. And so when you unearth your story and start um, sharing it, you attract um, clients that are more suited to you. But also what I found, and this is just so amazing. What I found is that when 
the entrepreneurs that I work with um, unearth and then own their story because they can't even believe, wow, this is my story. <laughs> but when they when they do that, they gain such confidence. And this I find, especially with you know light workers and and spiritual entrepreneurs, they often feel. Um, like, will I be taken seriously? Or, you know, can I really make money for this? Or is it, you know, and so, and, and a lot of times it's intuitive what they do, and, and they don't have a, you know, a certificate or whatever. Um, And so then they feel like, oh, well, I can't charge that much, because, you know, it's just me. Um, But when they unearth their story, they always understand how they became the powerhouse that they are. And they step into their business with a new level of confidence. That's profound. That's really profound for those of you tuning in right now. Like really, this is all about owning your true essence and owning your purpose, why you were created to be here Mm -hmm. on this earth, because we were all vessels and we're the messenger. And our experiences, I call this Elizabeth, the alchemy of us. So it's like, it's like the your your background, you know, your educational experiences, your stories, the experiences that you lived, and the lessons you took from that, and um, your strengths, your passions, your personality, and bringing all that into the alchemy, and mm-hmm. how beautiful that you really help people embody this, embrace it in their story. Wow, that's I, profound. It really um, is, and I I'm yeah. I'm so lucky to be be able to do this work mm, well you own your creativity you practice what you preach <laughs> <laughs> it is so potent what would you say is one of the biggest struggles that when people come to you they're like this is this is the biggest struggle well and it goes back to what you had mentioned before about like people coming to you and say i'm not creative and mm. and and that's i think one of the biggest struggles is that they they kind of recognize like, oh, yeah, I should have story in my business. Um, but they think, well, I can't write my story because I'm not creative. And for me, the best person to write your story is you. And I mean, yes, get a coach and get somebody to help you, um, you know, with the structure and the order and all that kind of stuff. But the first draft should be you. It should be how you say it, how you think. And because, yeah, you could work with a ghostwriter. Um, or you could hire somebody and you can just, you know, answer a few questions and they'll put something together for you. But it's not really part of you then. And I, mm. I, for me, it's so much more powerful when when people own their words and own their story mm. and own their creativity. And that's I really, um, you know, I'm an uh, advocate uh, for that. Um, but but, yeah, they feel like that they're, they're not creative or they feel like. Um, or in addition to I'm not creative, I don't have any stories that are relevant to my business. (laughs) I don't know how many times I come across that. (laughs) Let's bookmark it there and we can talk more about that after commercial because I feel like this is a really big, important piece we can really jam on. Sure thing. So as we go into commercial audience, I want to invite you to really reflect on your story of origin. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. If I could be you, and you could be me, 
for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. All right. Welcome back, loves. So, Elizabeth, I'd love for you to share what exactly happens, like, as tangible results when you're working with entrepreneurs and they have unearthed their origin story. They're putting it out there in the world. What happens for them? Well, one of the things is that they start attracting their ideal clients but also they have a sense of discernment because once they have the their own language about who they are and what they do and why they do it and they're out there speaking that then then they can see like who resonates with that and they they have more discernment about who they actually want to work with so it's it's almost like you know giving them like an application form in, in a way to see if they're a good fit, but it's just in the conversation. So they're able to make better decisions and they make them from a sense of, you know, abundance and creativity as opposed to scarcity. Oh my goodness, how am I going to pay my rent this month? I got to take any clients that come, even if they're not a good fit mm-hmm. or, or whatnot. So, so they have that. But um, one of the, one of the things that I've seen is that they actually gain the confidence to um, charge what they feel they are worth as opposed to what they think the market is going to pay, especially because, oh, it's a spiritual thing. Oh, it's a woo-woo thing or, you know, so yes. they kind of devalue it. And, um, and, and once they have that story unearthed and really they're standing grounded in it, then mm-hmm. they, they have a better sense of, of what they're worth and, and they they're not afraid to ask for it. Oh, that's so powerful. And may I just put a caveat on that? I always like to say, charge the worth of your services and your offerings, because our mm-hmm. worth is inherent. And, it, yeah. <laughs> and so it's just my own caveat to help others, because I feel like a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs struggle with with like, what do I charge? What do I, well, charge mm-hmm. the worth of your services, your worth, your own self-worth is inherent. That's so, right. Yes, yeah. You stand in your power. This is really about knowing how your own work with your clients is transformative and at that deeper level, because look how far you've come in your yeah. own story and all your own learnings and teachings and your own ad- education and who you are today and you're offering that to your clients for that similar transformation in whatever their highest truth and good is Mm -hmm, definitely and and you know clients often say that they notice um, a huge uptick in uh in the revenue once they once they have that story you know integrated into their back into their DNA and in their consciousness, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. so yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, really, it really is a powerful, but the other thing too, is that, that we as human beings, we actually don't make decisions, especially to buy a a program or buy a coach or whatever. We don't make it, you know, with the rational part of our brain, we make it (laughs) with the emotional part and stories touch the emotional part. Absolutely. Which is why story is so powerful because it helps us connect and feel like we're not alone. Like someone else gets Mm -hmm. us. We see we're mirrors for each other and we see ourselves in others stories yeah yeah exactly oh that's so powerful so powerful i'm really curious um are there any other common faq sort of questions that often people ask you elizabeth yeah well like one of the things that I mentioned already is that they think that, well, I don't have any stories that are relevant to my business. And mm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And pretty much everything that you do in your business comes from a story. You know, it, like if you if you're a business coach or if you, you know, um, you know, are um, a shamanic leader and, and you have mm-hmm. workshops or whatnot, you know, that there's going to be something different about how you run your workshop. And it's going to be born out of watching others or having tra- being trained, you know, under somebody else. And then, you, you know, you think, well, that's really interesting, but we need to add this because this is missing in, mm-hmm. you know, your philosophy. And, and so there's always a story for every single aspect, you know, every workshop you create, there's a story behind that every, you know, one day event or, or whatever, every program, every mastermind that you create, it's because there's a story behind it. And that one of my clients that I, I work with, she had a 12 month program and um, she wanted to have a story attached to each month. It was a different theme and it, there was a different modality, different healing modality that she used uh, in this 12 month program. And, um, and so, and so I just sat down with her and I said, okay, so how did you come up with the idea for this module? And, and each one was this fabulous story and, and, you know, 12 stories and actually there were more, but, you know, it's just a matter of having somebody being able to bring it out of you. And, you know, I was a journalist for quite a number of years and did, uh, you know, interview based articles and whatnot. So I know how to ask questions and, and mm-hmm. couple that with story. I'm really able to get to the heart of things. And like one of my clients, she, um, she was retired and uh, she had a great um, job in the government. And so she had a nice pension and, um, and then she started this business um, uh based on paper, you know, creating things out of, out of paper, like envelopes or cards or boxes and that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then um, encourage the people who took her workshops to put treats in it so that they could donate it to women's shelters or whatnot, because those people need some treats, oh, right? Wow. And, so and so it, it is. And, but when she talked about her business, she was, she would just kind of offhand say like, Oh, I just, you know, teach paper arts or, or whatever. And, and um, and why did she do it? Well, because she had so much paper that her husband said, you got to do something with it, either, you know, create your business or just dump, you know, all the paper out because there's too much paper in the house. And and so nobody's going to want to invest in the business or take a workshop just because you're trying to get rid of your paper. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And I, so I said, there's got to be another reason why you're doing this type of business in your retirement, because you could be doing anything. I mean, if it was mm-hmm. just to get, get some money, you could work at Dairy Queen or, you know, Loblaws right. or, yeah. you know, um, and, um, and so anyway, after uh, a, a little while, well, actually in the community, it was really funny because they said, well, maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe there's just no other reason. Cause I kept probing and they felt, you know, kind of protective of her because like, oh, well, you know, you're putting her on the hot seat or something. You're like, there's a breakthrough here. Come on. <laughs> and, um, and so I sent her, I said, okay, when you were working in the government, um, at what point did you wake up one day and realize that that government job didn't fulfill all of your heart and spiritual needs? And she paused, and then she pinpointed to the exact time of her life. And she had never thought about that. No one had ever asked her that. And, um, and, but that was the beginning of her origin story. That was why she decided to have that business, because she recognized that she had to go outside of her great you know, government job because it didn't fulfill all of who she was. It didn't help her own her creativity or, you know, feed that spiritual side of her. Um, although it was good for many other things. And, and so now all of a sudden, you know, thinking about that origin story. Yeah. I want to take one of your workshops. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I know that we could so jam more about this. I just really, (laughs) truly want to acknowledge you and the potent, powerful work that you're doing in the world to help entrepreneurs get their businesses out there in the world. How beautiful. 
And um, for those people who want to connect more, learn more from you, um, the notes, the, it will be in the show notes. The links will, to connect with Elizabeth is in the show notes. But Elizabeth, just to, for those that are just listening right now, how can they connect with you? Yes, yeah, so I, you can connect with me um, on Facebook. I have a Facebook group um, called um, Visionaries Creating Impact. And, and uh, that's one way. Also, um, Writer Johnston on Twitter and um, Elizabeth Johnston on LinkedIn um, and my website, elizabeth-johnston.com. Beautiful. And John, can you just spell out your name just uh, to make yeah. sure? Yes, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N. All right, my love. So make sure you check out the show notes as well for those links. So what we're going to do right now is to start shifting into our closing meditation. And what I'll invite you to do is make sure you find a spot that's comfortable. You can lie down or you can be seated. And I'll invite you to start to take a breath in. And then just release in the exhale. (sighs) Breathing in from your root chakra, sacral, solar plex, heart, throat, third eye, crown chakra. And take your breath into the cosmos. Expanding your breath so it pushes beyond your physical boundary so you feel the energy beyond your physical body in the front, in the back of you, around you. Suspending your breath, conjuring this powerful energy of you. And then exhaling. And then just letting your breath regulate. And noticing as you were tuning into this episode, what in this moment is standing out for you the most? Don't question it, just notice it. Because if it's standing out for you, there's a reason that right now, this part of the episode that's standing out for you is for you. And it's the message, it's the medicine that you are here to receive so that you may take this medicine and let it drop in deeper. So just even noticing as you're thinking about what stood out most for you, how your body feels, the sensations, Mm -hmm. the emotions that arise as you feel into this. And of course, staying curious, not judgmental. Hmm. And noticing how you will hmm, implement this thing that stood out the most for you. Now, breathing into your sacral chakra, so you're taking this beautiful learning, this takeaway. Breathing it into your sacral, your womb space, where you are starting to birth the next level version of you. You're starting to activate your creative juices, your flow. Breathing in more so that if you want, you can put your hand on your belly and let your belly, your breath push out your belly. It's really conjuring it in. Letting this takeaway just start to really drop in deeper. And notice what else gets stirred inside so beautifully. If you notice any resistance, any sense of fear, that's okay. Notice it. And in fact, that may be a good thing. Because that means you're stepping into, or you're stepping outside your comfort zone. 
which is where growth happens. You're expanding right now. Keep breathing into your womb space. And as you keep breathing this takeaway, as it's really being integrated in your womb space, you're going to really activate this for its highest truth and your highest calibration with light language. Here we go. Just letting yourself receive. Hmm. Breathing in and anchoring in. Imagine your breath sending it down to this beautiful crystal heart in the depths of the earth held by Mother Gaia. Holding all your precious intentions and creative force. And also at the same time, sending your breath, your essence into the cosmos through your crown. Expanding, expanding, expanding. Just hang out here for as long as you like. Thank you so much for tuning in, my loves. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing your wisdom. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.